What's up, Vacaville? This is Rick Johnson, your new Vice President of Vacaville Community Television, Access Channel 27, and on AT&T, we're on Channel 99. We've got a good show for you tonight. Local organizer, Colleen Britton, asked Sheriff John Lopey from Siskiyou County to come down and speak to the residents of Vacaville, and I think you guys will find it very interesting. So without further ado, here we go. Enjoy the show. Right now, let's give uh, Sheriff John Lopey a big hand and welcome him to our group. Thank you, Colleen. Thank you very much for being here. It's uh, indeed an honor uh, to be with you tonight. I have a lot of uh, my uh, some of my classmates. It's great, and uh, brought my old graveyard partner Lance Thielen with me, and I work with Doug and Carmen, and and uh, Steve Wilkins was one of my commanders and mentors, and we even have Colonel Suey over there, who uh, his uh, his son was uh, one of my mentors on the highway patrol. He's a sergeant and later a captain, but a uh, great guy. And uh, Pat Packer over there, she was like a mom to me when I was growing up, and, and Keith uh, Packer. So I know, uh, and uh, Steve, we ran hurdles together. And you know, one thing I must say about Vacaville is, uh, even though I haven't lived here for a long time, is uh, and I got this nice picture, for, uh, you know, wrestling picture. It really proves that I was young once. But we did have a great wrestling team. But the, the, the neat thing about Vacaville was always a very special place. And uh, I, I mean, we had a great high school. We had great teachers. We had great coaches. And I think those of us who did fairly well in life or, you know, I guess it depends on uh, the measure you, measurement uh, stick that you use. But I think a lot of, uh, you know, my success in life uh, can, is really due to those teachers and coaches that we had. You know, the Zaninos and the, and the Nelsons and the Gillies and the, just the great, uh, you know, coaches we had. I went in the Marine Corps on my 18th birthday right out of high school. And, you know, in Vac you know, Vacaville, had, I had a lot of friends, but no friends would go in the Marines with me. And my brother went in the Army with uh, the Burke boys and uh, Jack Oakle. And he had friends that went in the Army with him, but I didn't have anybody that'd go in the Marines with me. But actually, going in the Marines wasn't that bad, because after, uh, you know, Mr. Nelson and, and Zanino and Gilly and all those other guys, you know, it really wasn't that bad, you know. <laughs> I was in pretty good shape. But, uh, and Linda, you, gosh, we go way back, gosh. But anyway, uh, it, it, it was a great community. And one of the things about Vacaville that I really love, too, is uh, my mother was, the reason we moved to Vacaville was because she worked for the Air Force for 43 years. And, and uh she was, she was there, and I actually flew out of, uh, you know, Travis when I went overseas, when I was in the Marine Corps. And, uh, you know, it was kind of, you know, one time Jane Fonda was outside the front gate. She's, she's not one of my favorite, uh, you know, celebrities. <laughs> Uh, but she was there. She she was there and handled the uh, records when the POWs came home from from Vietnam. And we always had, you know, a lot of my friends. They had uh, they had uh, parents that were either NCOs or officers in the Air Force. And uh, it was always a patriotic town. And even during Vietnam, when the war wasn't particularly, uh, you know, po uh, popular when when I graduated in '72. There's still a lot of guys and gals joining the military because they love our country and they love our constitution and they're brought up with those values that made America strong. And I think Vacaville was always that kind of town and, our, and the high school exemplified those standards and those values that made us all better people. So I owe you. So thanks for being here. It is a privilege. And I kind of prepared a speech. And if I would have known so many people were going to be here, I would have put more effort into it. But uh, and another thing I want to mention, I know a meeting's going to work out well when one, you say the Pledge of Allegiance, because we could still do that and kind of uh, like it and support that. And when you actually can still pray and say it in Jesus' name. And it's kind of neat being a sheriff because I'm not really constrained by as many rules and regulations. And when I go to meet, sometimes people say, hey, will you pray? And I used to pray a lot when I was over in Pat. I think I accept the Lord over the Packer house when I was like 14 years old. And I've erred, you know, from time to time, but uh, she's kind of responsible for that. But it's kind of nice, you know, we, in America, we could still pray and say in Jesus' name. And I'll tell you, if we don't pray for our country, we're, we're in a lot of trouble right now. 
But uh, I'll start out, and hopefully this isn't too boring for you, but uh, what, what I'm going to do is I'm going to give you kind of a broad-based overview of what's happening in Siskiyou County. And a lot of it has to do with uh, constitutional infringements, uh, water issues, land uh, issues, and things of that nature because it really applies to all of us. What's happening in rural America is happening here. It's just more subtle. They may call it sustainable development, but essentially uh, that's one of the things that, that I see in my, in, in my country, in your country, in our, our country, is that uh, environmental extremism is one of the things that is being used to usurp the Constitution. As a sheriff, I'm a constitutional officer. I am sworn to uphold and defend the Constitution Constitution uh, against all enemies, foreign and domestic. It seems like we have more domestic uh, enemies, and uh, and I'm kind of sensitive about enemies. Uh, uh, during my military uh, service, uh, I served during the Vietnam era in the Marines, and then uh, I served over 30 years as a commissioned officer in the Army, and I served in places like Haiti and Bosnia and Afghanistan and Iraq, and I've continuously observed the, the honor and the courage and the commitment and the sacrifice that our men and women in, in, in uniform are continuously exemplifying in their actions here and abroad, and what their families go through. And a lot of times they don't get a lot of credit. You know, so anyway, I'll start off, and uh, then uh, I'll, it's probably gonna take me uh, 10 to 15 minutes to get through this, and then I'll entertain questions you may have. But indeed, it is an honor, a distinct honor and privilege for me to be with you tonight. And this is obviously a great group, pretty good looking group too. <laughs> And Siskiyou County is kind of like this. You know, we, we still pray. A lot of people carry guns, you know. <laughs> Yesterday I went to a meeting, and there were a bunch of ladies there. It was, it was, uh, it was 40 degrees outside, but it was warm, warm in the room. I took off my jacket, and I was carrying a, uh, a uh, 45. And it reminds me of an of a, of, of a email I read from Texas. And she goes, hey, well, what kind of gun is that? And I said, well, that's a 45. He said, well, why do you have to carry a 45? And I said, well, I like the answer that that uh, Texas Ranger gave. He said, well, because there's no 46. <laughs> you know? <laughs> so, anyway. Uh, we still love God and guns in Siskiyou County, just like you do here, so. Anyway, good evening, and uh, thank you for giving me the privilege of being here to briefly discuss what's happening in Siskiyou County and describe our fight to preserve our heritage, way of life, economy, public safety, health, and welfare of our citizens and the freedoms we hold dear. From the perspective of an, elect, of a, an elected sheriff, most sheriffs I know are very concerned about the health and public safety implications of laws and regulations that are elected and appointed officials in force. We sheriffs are not anti-government. We are not extremists. We are not advocates of extremist ideas, violence, or lawlessness. Unfortunately, this is how we sheriffs and many of you brave Americans are being portrayed in the media and on the internet. Months ago, I was portrayed in an unfavorable light on the website Huffington Post. And then I'd let, and a couple of weeks ago, I was in the New York Times, and of course they never quote you right. But it is discouraging that there are those who are attempting to denigrate some courageous sheriffs and freedom-loving Americans because we are standing for the rights of our citizens we serve and the federal and state constitutions we have sworn to uphold. We have recognized that some agencies and several special interest groups are using money, influence, politics, regulations, and sometimes lies to push an extremist agenda which threatens to literally destroy rural America and the American way of life. Contrary to popular belief, I get along with most federal and state agencies working in my county. I welcome open dialogue, truth, and interagency cooperation. However, too many politicians and bureaucrats have forgotten that they work for the people. Too many bureaucrats have forgotten that public service means putting the citizens' interests above the in your own interests. Abraham Lincoln once said, America will never be destroyed from the outside. 
If we falter and lose our freedoms, it will be because we destroyed ourselves. And I think that's what's happening right now. Most sheriffs are standing for freedom and our inalienable rights and freedom to pursue the American dream as brave protectors of the law who are striving just to do the right thing. And you citizens are doing the same thing, being in this room tonight. As a sheriff, we are all sworn to uphold and defend the Constitution of the United States and the California State Constitution against all enemies, foreign and domestic. Some federal and state agencies and bureaucratic centrally developed policies and regulations threaten the public health, safety, and welfare of our citizens and are systematically destroying America. Although we have dedicated and capable local leaders, and you know, we do have pretty good local leaders, including county supervisors and a great congressman and equally loyal and staunch state senatorial and state assembly leaders, these leaders are overwhelmed by political power and influence in Sacramento and Washington, D.C. We're outnumbered. Most people tell me that they see our sacred constitution, our freedoms, and the way of life threatened like never before. Our citizens see that for the most part, our interests are not being promoted or advanced in the legislative halls of Sacramento or Washington, D.C. Rural America and counties like Siskiyou have been forgotten by many of our political elite many miles away from our homes. Many of these same outside political leaders have never even been to my county. And I bet you a lot of them don't even venture into Solano County either. Our founding fathers got it right. They knew human nature and built safeguards into the Constitution and the Bill of Rights because they knew men would screw things up. Daniel Webster once said, hold on, my friends, to the Constitution and to the Republic for which it stands. Hold on to the Constitution, for if the American Constitution should fail, there will be anarchy throughout the world. And I could assure you I've been in a lot of foreign countries on extended tours and exotic vacations, courtesy of the U.S. government, and that is absolutely true. If America is not there, it ain't going to happen. Now, this is going to be another, this is going to be a little politically incorrect. But our founding fathers were Christian men and they carefully crafted the Declaration of Independence, Constitution, and Bill of Rights, and they were inspired by divine providence. Amen. And our inalienable rights come from above, not from whoever's sitting in the White House or in Congress. A famous German philosopher once said, the hero draws inspiration from the virtue of ancestors. President John F. Kennedy once said, a nation reveals itself not only by the men it produces, but also by the men it remembers. This seems like a good time to cling to the ideals and truths that made us and our nation strong more than ever before. Since taking office, the citizens I serve have been under siege. Siskiyou County is the fifth largest county geographically in the state with almost 6,200 square miles. It's a pretty big county. Nearly 65% of our land is public land, mostly managed by the U.S. Forest Service. The timber industry is all but destroyed. A once thriving economic giant is now a shadow of its former self. During the early 1980s, Siskiyou County had about 22 lumber mills. Now we have two partially functioning mills. In other words, we have one of the highest unemployment rates in the state. Thanks to overregulation, the spotted owl, environmental extremism, bad science, negligence, and political correctness run amok, our economy and traditions associated with logging and timber are almost completely destroyed. Siskiyou County is also overwhelmed by attacks against our traditional ways of making a living and working. Recreation, mining, farming, and ranching are being threatened due to over-application of various laws and regulations such as the Endangered Species Act. For three to four decades, environmental extremism and unwise decisions have elevated the interests of trees, fish, birds, and frogs over the interests of hard-working American citizens. 
We are destroying our environment in our efforts to protect it. The vast majority of farmers and ranchers live off the land, work hard to preserve it, and they are the best true conservationists and environmentalists I know. Yet, it seems like many are punished for the indiscretions of a very few. The Department of Interior and many other federal and state agencies are attempting to remove four perfectly functioning dams that provide green energy on the upper Klamath River, which will deny clean energy to about 70,000 people and destroy the economy, recreation, and habitat for hundreds of species of wildlife of numerous kinds in deference to the coho and Chinook salmon. The will of nearly 70% of the Siskiyou County people who voted against dam removal has been largely ignored by the bureaucrats responsible for the deals, many concocted in back rooms without adequate local official or citizen input, contrary to law and common sense. Thus far, concerns about 21 million cubic tons of sediment containing hazardous materials flowing down the Klamath River diminish water for firefighting, reduce water for farmers, the capacity to control flooding, and the destruction of recreation and concerns for other habitat have fallen on deaf ears. An already economically challenged area is on the path to obliteration. Dr. Paul Hauser, a Bureau of Reclamation scientific advisor, recently criticized the scientific accuracy and integrity of the science used to justify the dam removal, and he asserted the studies were developed to support former Secretary Salazar's expressed desire to remove the dams. Uh, by the way, at the expense of the Siskiyou County citizenry. For his integrity and moral and professional courage, Dr. Hauser was fired for failing to be a team player. The environmental extremism and overregulation by a few federal and state agencies have created one of the worst economies in California. Siskiyou County has some of the highest unemployment rates and highest statistics in alcohol abuse, drug abuse, child abuse, and domestic abuse rates in the whole state of California. Once proud and prosperous communities are now breeding grounds for alcohol and drug abuse, marijuana cultivation, illicit drug trafficking, and virtually every other form of crime. And then these, uh, some of these politicians say, well, what are you sheriffs involved for? Would you do it? Well, you're destroying my county and our way of life and our tax base. And, and, I, and this crime's going up. And I'd rather have somebody working at the mill than growing marijuana. And they look at me like, well, that's a medicine. No, it's an illicit drug under, under uh, the uh, Controlled Substances Act. Schedule one of the Controlled Substances Act. I get a lot of hate mail from Colorado. <laughs> no, I, oh, that, and there are me, some of these people are really, I mean, they're the marijuana fans, and, you know, and I know we have medical marijuana laws here that we, as long as someone's following the law, we're not going to bother them, but uh, the, the people in Colorado, Washington hasn't got on me yet, but Colorado's pretty, been pretty rough on me for the last few weeks. Okay, the, the, uh, the economic disaster forced upon Siskiyou County through litigation, federal and state regulatory abuses, and the influence of special interest groups have eroded property rights and the freedom to earn a living. Self-sufficiency, pride, incentive, opportunity, and freedom have been replaced by dependence on the government, loss of hope, defeatism, lack of jobs, and diminished capacity to pursue life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. You, know, you, you read the Declaration of Independence and the grievances, grievances against King George. Not that I was an honor student in, in uh, high school, but I kind of caught up in college. And, you know, I've been reading up a lot, a lot on the Constitution since I've been a sheriff. And it's almost, you think, man, they, they were going through some of the same stuff we're going through now. The Siskiyou County Sheriff's Office has experienced about a 30% decline in deputy and correctional deputy positions in recent years. This means fewer resources with which to prevent and to respond to a rise in crime rate. AB 109, or realignment, where these nonviolent offenders, they're putting more criminals on the streets, about 30,000 thus far, and that number's going up, while fewer peace officers are available to counteract this threat to public safety. Most county jails are now mini prisons and overcrowded 
to unprecedented levels. I have no misdemeanors in my jail. They're all felons. In fact, most felons get out, unless it's a real violent felony. And that's the situation we find ourselves in. Now an environmental activist organization is attempting to remove another dam, the Dwinell Dam, which is in Lake Shastina. The same organization helped to destroy the timber industry. This same organization stands to gain millions of dollars in grants and giveaways from the federal government if the Klamath dams are removed. You kind of follow the money and go, it's just not right. I mean, there's, there's corruption and there's just malfeasance and there's just some bad stuff going on. The few farming, ranching, mining, and recreational enterprises which still exist are indeed threatened. When they are threatened, so are our vital county services and public safety resources with which to mitigate crime and disorder. Due to the lack of political will and bad policies which render our border with Mexico unsecure, Siskiyou County is besieged by drug trafficking organizations growing huge quantities of marijuana in our public land areas and I do not recall a more dangerous time when it comes to illicit drug trafficking via our major highways and interstates. We just shoot ourselves in the foot. And in my opinion, we, a lot of our crime problems are because of our, our lack of, uh, you know, the border security. And we don't know who comes in here. And I kind of take it personal because I love the military. I love the men and women in the military. I went, I went to see that movie, uh, you know, The Lone Survivor. Anybody seen that movie? I, I read that book a couple years ago, that Marcus Luttrell. And I was just a little ticked off yesterday. Someone sent me an email. We got some of the media, call, you know, uh, calling that movie. Oh, it's glorifying war. It's glorifying militarism. It's this, it's that. I said, what are you people, nuts? You know, once every four or five years, we get a decent movie that extols the virtues, the courage, the commitment, and the honorable service of our men and women in uniform and their families that get left behind, and we have people complaining about it. That is just not right. And it kind of makes me mad. Now, the war on the border is also a war waged in all our counties. The cost of this war is absorbed by counties like yours and mine. The cost includes a generation of our children besieged by illicit drugs available in nearly every school and neighborhood. I love Vacaville High School, and when I think back, man, that was like, uh, I mean, I don't know how you could have a better school, a better neighborhoods, and you know, better teachers and coaches, like I said before. And, you know, I mean, hoodlums were, gosh, pretty lightweight. Every once in a while, someone would get in a fight. I got in a fight in the library once and got suspended for a few days. <laughs> Mr. Vader gave me the treatment. But, you know, it's nothing like it is now. And, uh, and unfortunately, none of our communities are like they used to be. And it's because these values and things that we hold dear are just disintegrating before our eyes. And we're not holding some of our governmental officials accountable, in my humble opinion. Now, there is a threat. Now, this is another thing. This is just a few things. I can't mention everything we're having problems with. But there's a threat to classify thousands of acres of land in California and Oregon as monument land, pursuant to the Antiquities Act. The president has evidently th thinks or, I mean, has the authority with a sweep of a pen to t tie up thousands and thousands, and factually, if, if, if factually, it's millions of acres of land for monument land, which means it's not available for grazing and, and hunting and, and hiking and, and equestrian use and things like that. I mean, it really restricts the land use. This will close off the land to most uses. And again, I mentioned grazing, timber harvesting, recreation, and mining. Here are some other startling developments from Siskiyou County. The state, in their infinite wisdom, has raised water master fees for Scott and Shasta Valley ranchers and the farmers by 800%. You know, I'm getting to think, I love ranchers and farmers. I'm not a rancher, I'm not a farmer but they're the hardest working people I ever saw. When I, when I grew up in Vacaville, I went to Willis Jepson Junior High, then I went, moved on to Va uh, Vacaville High School. We had a lot of farms around here, and we still do, but we, it used to be an agricultural community. 
And when I see our own government, some of these regulatory agencies attacking ranchers and farmers who work day and night to till the land and to make a, a decent living for them and their families, it just really uh, disheartens me. It's, it's, a, it's a sad commentary on how things are going. Now this is a good one. The National Marine Fisheries Service is attempting to implement a so-called voluntary coho salmon restoration program in Siskiyou County. The North Coast Regional Water Control Board is attempting to implement a groundwater monitoring program, which could cost ranchers and farmers as much as one half dollar to several dollars an acre. In the recent past, now this is one I didn't even know they had a law enforcement agency. The National Oceanic Atmospheric Agency's NOAA, Office of Law Enforcement, attempted to initiate a federal criminal investigation against a local rancher for an alleged fish kill of coho salmon fingerlings, which supposedly died in a creek that seasonally goes dry, and they bypassed me, they didn't, I didn't know they were my, in my county, the district attorney and local courts. This so-called investigation resulted from an environmental activist complaint. This action potentially subjected a hardworking, prominent ranching family to federal court action in the Eastern District Court, 275 miles away from our, our area. An agency primarily vested with enforcement of federal laws for the National Marine Fisheries Service in coastal waters miraculously found it necessary to drive 155 miles inland to investigate the alleged death of a few minnows in a puddle on private property. And this ranch is owned and operated by the, uh, has been owned and operated by the same family for five generations. And then we got another complaint. This environmental activist snuck on the land and you know what the complaint was? I saw a cow peeing in the creek, urinating in the creek. And I saw them dredging out gravel out of the dry creek bed, something they've done for five generations. And I called, I called the uh, North Coast Regional Water Control Board because this rancher called me and said, hey, I got a few agencies that want to come and visit me. I said, well, what agencies? NOAA. EPA, the Corps of Engineers, the California Department of Fish and Wildlife, which used to be the Fish and Game, and the, uh, let me see, I'm forgetting one. Uh, gee, I'm getting old. I'm forgetting an agency. Anyway, oh, and the North Coast Regional Water Control Board. So five agencies, and I called this uh, North Coast Regional Water Control uh, person in charge. I said, why are you bothering these ranchers? Well, they may need another permit. Well, they already have a stream bed alteration permit from the Fish and Wildlife. Why do they need another one? Well, because uh, because they're uh, you know they're taking the gravel out of the creek. I said, yeah, but they got a, a stream bed alteration permit to do that. Well, they may need another permit. And I said, well, how many permits does a farmer need to make a living? They said, well, they may need one from us and the Corps of Engineers. And I said, the Corps of Engineers, you gotta be kidding me, up in Siskiyou County? And I said, by the way, how much do these, uh, you know, these permits cost? Well, they could be spendy. Okay, can you narrow that down? Is that like $1,000, $100,000? Well, they're spendy. I said, oh, that's a you know, typical bureaucratic response, but that's the kind of stuff we're putting up with and some of our ranchers and farmers are putting up with. Now, we did get them to cancel that meeting, but, and, and they, they tried to file criminal charges, and now they're coming back trying to go the administrative route, and uh, they, they said, we're cutting the uh, violation down, because it could be $25,000 per fish, and there's like five or six, but we're gonna cut the fine down to $8,000. So they're fighting it, and I told them, hey, I'm gonna go testify in court for you if, this, if, they, if they do this. But they're going administrative uh, with civil penalties because they know they can't get it through the court, at least in our jurisdiction. Recently, we were able to, uh, let me see. Uh, okay, I talked about that. Recently, a U.S. Forest Service representative told the Happy Camp Coordination Committee, because we're trying to get more timber sales, that their attempt to attract a lumber mill uh, uh, to Happy Camp, they used to have six, could be held up for four or five years due to environmental activists, the North Coast Regional Water Control Board, and the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service's newly released Spotted Owl Restoration Plan. And then you ask these agencies, well, can you prove that uh, all these millions of dollars you spent to restore or to protect the uh, spotted owl even has done any good? Because the uh, the fuel buildup in our forests are 10 times what is normally acceptable in forestry terms. It's, it leaves us susceptible to catastrophic wildland fires. It sucks up a lot of water. 
because these big trees uh, need water. Uh, and, then, and then they try to get the water from the ranchers, leaves us susceptible to these, uh, these big fires, and it is an unhealthy habitat for the spotted owl because they can't see their prey. And they can't, they can't really give you a straight answer. Well, we have, a, we have some scientific information, some anecdotal information. Well, if you can't prove that you're spending millions of dollars doing any good, then why are you even doing it? And then, and then these poor people down at Happy Camp, uh, one of the most problematic uh, areas economically in my county, are trying to open a lumber mill, and they say, well, you know, well, you could probably get one approved in four or five years. And that's what they're putting up with. And then uh, federal policies have failed to properly manage our forests. I, I, I mentioned that. Currently, uh, let me see, I, I mentioned that. We just had some uh, economic loss from, uh, we had Butler, Boulder, and Shelley fires. And last year we sustained some pretty catastrophic losses. Uh, let me see. And then we, uh, our congressman submitted a bill that would remedy some of these forest management problems. And the administration, evidently President Obama is going to veto it. Dredge mining is now prohibited in the lower Klamath River Basin. Pleased to allow mining and other Siskiyou County tradition were ignored by legislators and a moratorium was signed into law despite the, a, the poor economic forecasts and conditions in impacted areas. A variety of mining laws were also ignored or disregarded. A few months ago I was advised by a young couple residing in Mount Shasta that they were visited by the California Department of Food and Agriculture. Their crime? Someone filed a complaint that they were operating an illegal, illegal dairy. The young couple, along with some other families, owned three cows. It is evidently illegal to give away or sell their milk. Although they, they weren't cited, a departmental supervisor advised them they would be subject to fines of $10,000 if they gave away or sold the milk. When asked how they could obtain a dairy permit, they were advised it would cost them a minimum of $250,000 to purchase enough equipment to comply with the permit requirements. Evidently, it doesn't matter if you have three cows or 3,000. It all costs the same to comply with the regulations imposed by late state regulators. Coordination laws which require input and collaboration between federal, state, local officials and citizens required by federal and many state plans are too often not followed. For decades, little or no consideration has been given to the property rights and interests of people. Oh, the citizens we serve. The consistency between policy or, or plans imposed and the balance required between local and state or federal plans and environmental protections are being ignored or not properly implemented. Other laws, such as the Regulatory Flexibility Act and the Data Quality Act, have been largely disregarded by those attempting to inflict further economic ruin on our hardworking timber, ranching, farming, and mining industries. Most citizens tell me their government acts like fish, birds, frogs, and trees are more important than people. The first, second, fourth, fifth, eighth, tenth, and fourteenth amendments, at a minimum, are being ignored and or eroded by some federal and state agencies in their quest to control our water, land, and other natural resources. The Federal Land Policy and Management Act and other provisions of law, such as the National Environmental Policy Act, NEPA, which require coordination with local officials like the county sheriff, board of supervisors, and other officials, and the people we serve are frequently overlooked, not so much by locals, but by high-level leaders and policymakers. In Butte Valley, we now have a controversy because environmental activists are attempting to initiate actions to reintroduce the northern gray wolf to our county and classify the animal as an endangered species. A study conducted by Ecological uh, Economics estimates that wolf depredation, that's, you know, wolves kill livestock and, and, uh, and, and also stress the herds. Uh, where they have been reintroduced costs the average rancher over $11,000 a year due to livestock kills and other losses. We also have problems with crop and fence destruction caused by a, an overabundance of elk and we're attempting to coordinate those issues with the California Fish and Wildlife. Numerous federal and state agencies are subject to coordination laws and executive orders from Presidents uh, Clinton, Bush, and Obama have also been issued which reinforce these requirements and 20 statutes in California require coordination. Now our Second Amendment rights are under relentless attack in California 
and on a national basis, despite the fact that the two recent Supreme Court decisions, and you may know that I, uh, I was one of a number of sheriffs in Northern California that sent, I sent a letter to, to uh, Vice President Biden, and I sent a letter to uh, Dianne Feinstein. You know, and that's kind of like spitting in the wind, but we, you know, we did it anyway. And these are some of the things that, that I explained in my letter, my letters. And I met, you know, I actually saw Biden when I was in Iraq. He went through the chow hall. I had two celebrities that I saw in uh, Iraq. I saw Arnold Schwarzenegger and I saw, and I saw Biden. And, uh, well, they're celebrities to other people, not me. And I, and I didn't even bother going to uh, say hello to, to uh, Biden. And I saw Stepanopoulos and some of those other people. And I saw Hillary too. But I went the other way. <laughs> but anyway, uh, yeah. But the Second Amendment, I, I point out just a few minor issues like, uh, do you guys consider like Supreme Court decisions like uh, the Heller decision in, in Washington, D.C. and the McDonald decision in, uh, in, in Chicago? Reaffirming a citizen's right to keep and bear arms, especially for self-protection and defending one's family and home. Strict gun laws in Washington, D.C. and Chicago have done nothing but escalate crime rates. Chicago has the highest murder rate in the nation, yet still clings to the strictest of gun laws, denying good citizens the right to protect themselves and their families, but empowering predatory criminals who have no intention of following such foolish laws. And if you look at New Zealand and England and Australia and some of these countries and some of these uh, dictatorial regimes I've seen in uh, exotic places overseas, that's the first thing they do. And Nazi Germany did the same thing. You know, they take away the people's guns. Yeah. In California alone, there are over 800 firearms related laws and regulations. Over 800. How many laws do we need before you just say stop enough? Half of these laws probably should be uh, repealed. But that's one of the things we told the Governor, Brown, Governor Brown's staff about uh, eight or nine of us sheriffs went to the uh, Capitol and tried to get him to veto this latest round of gun laws. And he did veto some of them. Uh, but I said, you know, how many laws do you need? You, should, you got so many laws now, it's so confusing. You look at the penal code where most of the laws are. Lance could tell you, my old buddy, he used to enforce that penal code a lot on vehicle code. But, there's so many laws are so confusing. I mean, even law enforcement officials don't understand them. Then you call DOJ, who are supposed to be the subject matter experts, and you ask them a question, you talk to three people, you get three different answers. And I'll tell you my M1 story in a minute. <laughs> Now, the current attacks against the Second Amendment and other rights and freedoms protected by the U.S. and California constitutions by political leaders attempting to exploit, and it's another thing that kind of ticked me off that I told uh, the Vice President and, and uh, Senator Feinstein. You are exploiting tragic incidents such as the Newtown, Connecticut and Aurora, Colorado shootings, and that is deplorable and a sad commentary on where we are and where we are going as a nation. Lawbreakers are being emboldened and supported, but law-abiding citizens are being stripped of their constitutional right to protect themselves and their families from the predators in our society. And the media, this is a startling revelation, the media is generally against us and harbors support for environmental causes. Even in Siskiyou County, I got excoriated in the paper over this damn issue. And uh, I said, what the heck, our paper, this is Siskiyou County, I mean, can't you get, I, I don't feel the love. And they said, hey, it's owned by a corporation back east. And they don't like, they don't like uh, us speaking out. And they, and they don't, probably don't understand the Constitution either. Now, I like this. History appears to be repeating itself, and we really have to hold the media accountable. I like this quote by Thomas Jefferson once said, the man who reads nothing is better educated than the man who reads nothing but newspapers. <laughs> Many sheriffs are staying together to challenge agencies which intentionally or unintentionally attempt to enact unconstitutional policies or regulations contrary to prudent public health and safety interests of the citizens we serve. What more can you do to help?
Is there hope for Solano County or Siskiyou County? Louis Brandeis once said, those who won our independence believed liberty to be the secret of happiness and courage to be the secret of liberty. It is time for us to be men and women of courage and uh, you know, sheriffs and, and others and you to do the job because we, we have to stand now because if we don't, our nation as we recognize it is not gonna exist in a very short period of time. Study the US Constitution, Bill of Rights and related documents such as the Federalist Papers. Be alert for and get informed about local issues which impact you now or could impact you in the future. Get involved, stay in the fight, and by all means, vote and encourage others to vote. It amazes me, you talk to people and they want to cry, you know, they cry, cry and complain. I say, well, did you vote? Oh, no, I didn't vote. Well, then I don't want to talk to you. You know, some of us fought for the freedom to fight. We've been fighting for that freedom ever since uh, even before the Revolutionary War. And you know what the least we could do and our neighbors and our friends and our family can do is get out there and vote. Because the reason we didn't vote last time is the reason we got what we got now. We must avoid falling into the hands of those who want to destroy rural America, and we have to be careful not to resort to extremist tactics, violence, or affiliate with those who want to make this fight about political parties or affiliation. It's not about political parties. And you know, that's what makes me mad. Every Tea Party organization I've ever been to, they're just good people uh, that, that are just trying to make a difference in their, in their communities. Yet you get, you get branded as, as you know, some kind of extremist which is not right. This fight isn't about political parties or personal agendas. It's about the survival of America and the preservation of constitutional principles and values. We will win this fight by being men and women of knowledge, strength, integrity, honor, character, and faith. We must also be careful about supporting the exclusion of federal and state agencies from our counties because a lot of them do good work and there are a lot of dedicated federal and state employees and we don't want to, you know, uh, paint everybody with the same brush either. And, uh, and, and we must foster an atmosphere of mutual cooperation, respect, and promote traditional law enforcement protocols. We have to remember that there are many federal and state agencies uh, and, and other members in the public safety ranks in particular who risk their lives to assist us. You know, support your local sheriff, hold your local, state, and congressional leaders accountable, and reach out to them and network with them as often as possible. Every time we get picked on, I call my uh, congressman, I call my assembly, I call my state senator, I have my, their numbers in my phone, and they're really good people, and I call them, and uh, it, it just, oh, it's funny, when I said that the congressman and the uh, representative from the state assembly and the senator was going to show up at this ranch with all these, uh, you know, agencies trying to gang up on these poor ranchers, you know, that, that's when they backed off. I told the sheriff was going to be there too, and I don't know how much they cared about the sheriff, but they didn't want to see the congressman and the other uh, officials. Now, uh, I want, and I think what the vast majority of Americans want, justice, truth, honesty, and a fair deal from our own government. I want an America and a government which follows the Constitution and embodies what our Creator and Founding Fathers envisioned not so long ago. The great Democrat, I'm going to cite, this is the only Democrat I cite in any of my speeches, U.S. Senator Zell Miller, a former Marine, I might add. Holding the course of freedom is hard, but with all I've learned from study, age, and experience, I believe with every fiber of my body that there comes a time when a civilization has to choose between good and evil and between freedom and tyranny, and that time is here. I firmly believe that the reason many citizens support the concept of a new and separate state, that's another thing, I, I think that paper is going around, uh, because in my, the people are so uh, upset in Siskiyou County and 10 other counties that they're actually trying to secede from the state of California. And I understand the, the, uh, the, the counties in northern Colorado want to secede from southern Colorado because they're kind of mad at the people in Denver and we're kind of mad at the people in San Francisco and LA and stuff like that. So it's, uh, and, and I, you know, I'm not in a position, I have to support the Constitution. I'm not in a position to, uh, you know, endorse some separatist movement, but people are so upset and so disillusioned and so disappointed with their government, they're resorting to trying to secede from it. And I gotta say that, you know, can't, in some ways I can't blame them. 
Now, I firmly, uh, now, uh, if nothing else, our movement should transmit a strong message that all Americans, like Solano County or Siskiyou County, are stand tall to save themselves, their children and grandchildren from total oblivion and destruction of the American way of life. We are standing for freedom. We are standing for a just and fair deal from our own state and national leaders. We are standing for the Constitution, for the ideals and values that have made Americans, and, and uh, you know, both in Solano County and Siskiyou County, uh, made us great. We are standing for truth and justice. That is why, as, as a sheriff, I stand before you this evening. The America we will have and the country our children and grandchildren will inherit depend on all of us. We must stand for the rights, freedoms, and values which made our nation strong. I'm sure you've heard the, the quote by Edmund Burke. He once said, all that is necessary for the triumph of evil is for good men to do nothing. Ladies and gentlemen, our way of life is at stake and so is our future. And this is the time to act. So thank you, God bless you, and God bless the United States of America. Thank you. Thank you very much.